Hi, Chem12. Uh, so today we'll look at the uh, electrochemical cell, a battery. Um, and then we'll look at one more topic on um, Friday. Um, uh, and th that'll be the last topic we look at. I know there's a little bit extra left over in the notes package, but we won't get to that. Um, and then what I'll do is on Friday, I'll give you your um, take home exam on the, what we covered in the unit. Uh, and that'll be the last uh, thing of the course, which you can hand in in the following week. Okay, as uh, next week's technically uh, the last week of school. So I'll give you that week to finish the uh, take home exam. Uh, and then I'll have your um, final marks. Okay. Um, so with the electrochemical cell, essentially this is a battery. And what it's doing is it's taking chemical energy uh, and converting it to electrical energy. Okay, so chemical energy in terms of uh, a spontaneous uh, redox reaction. So what spontaneous means is you don't need any input energy to get the reaction to occur. It just occurs on its own. And then that gets converted uh, to electrical energy. Okay, so let's, let's look at um, how this uh, works. Okay, so you've got uh, two nodes. You've got um, uh, what we call the anode, which is a negative terminal, and the cathode, that's the um, uh, positive terminal. And electrons uh, travel from anode to cathode, okay? So th these are uh, your, your electrons, okay? So um, what any type of circuit is, um, is basically electrons moving along uh, some type of conducting wire. Okay, so that's what's happening here. So this, it's going from uh, anode to cathode. And so by in, in doing so, what happens is uh, you create uh, a voltage. Okay. Now your anode is always the site of oxidation and your cathode is the site of reduction. Okay, and so one way to remember is uh, anode is a vowel, oxidation is a vowel. Okay, so that way you don't mix uh, the two up. Okay, so these are these are your electrodes. Okay, so the 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 two metallic um, uh, pieces here, and then you have two solutions uh, which contain electrolytes, uh, and then you have something that connects the two solutions, which is a salt bridge. Okay, so what the salt bridge is doing is it's basically trying to maintain the relative um, ionic charge in the solutions. Now, at some point, um, that's no longer going to occur. And essentially, um, when that happens, the battery dies, right? So you, when you have a battery that works off of a, 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 a chemical reaction, um, your maximum voltage you get at the beginning. And then as time progresses, your voltage is going to decrease. Uh, to eventually a point where there is no longer any voltage because your reaction has ceased to occur. Um, now, what the salt bridge is doing here is, so if you look at, let's look at the anode. Okay, so the anode is the site of oxidation. So here's your oxidation half reaction. So this one we're looking at the zinc. And so what you see here is the zinc 2 plus is being produced. So there's a zinc 2 plus. And what happens is the zinc 2 plus gravitates towards the salt bridge. The reason why that's significant is if it didn't do that, then you would um, you would start building up too much positive charge. The reason why the zinc 2 plus is being attracted to the salt bridge is because of the negative ion that occurs in the salt bridge. So it's basically pulling it towards each other um, and that maintains a relative charge in the solution. Okay, um, And as the zinc 2 plus is leaving, the uh, anode, this is why the anode's mass uh, is, is going to uh, decrease. Okay, so that's why the, the mass of the anode uh, always decreases. On the other node, uh, the uh, reduction node, the cathode, uh, what's happening is it's, it, it's taking in um, the, um, the ion Okay, because it's a reduction half reaction, and so therefore its mass is going to increase. And again, what the salt bridge is doing is it's looking at, okay, so you're you're taking in, uh, you're you're basically losing this positive charge as it's going towards the cathode, and so 
um, if you lose negative charge at the same time, which is being attracted to the salt bridge, the positive ion in the salt bridge, then that maintains a relative charge, ionic charge in the solution. Okay, the electrons only travel along the wire; they don't uh, they don't uh, travel within the uh, beakers. Okay. Okay, so. This is, uh, this is true of what we did when we balanced. Number of electrons involved in oxidation must equal the number in reduction. Okay, so again, the salt bridge um, is the purpose is to maintain charge balance. Okay, so it prevents building up excess positive or negative charge. And then voltage is a description of the electron flow. So we, we looked at those um, uh, that uh, table of uh, reduction half reactions, and we we talked about it in terms of which one is the uh, stronger oxidizing agent as you go up. We ignored the uh, voltages, so now let's look at the voltage. So what we do is we arbitrarily define the hydrogen half cell as zero volts, um, and then basically all the other um, half cell voltages are uh, in relation to that. Okay, so if we look at the zinc half reaction, um, hey, remember they have double arrows, right? And so if you look at this, um, the zinc written as is as a reduction uh, gives you a negative 0.76 volts. And then as an oxidation, what happens is you flip that around. And so as a result, what you do with the sign of the voltage, the polarity of the voltage, is you also flip that around. So what we want to look at is how do we figure out what the total voltage of a battery is going to be. And so the, this is the reaction that you have in your textbook. It's a little bit confusing. Um, so what it says is uh, the E cell. So this is the, the total. Uh, this is your, your battery or your complete redox, right? So that's a combination of the two half reactions is equal to the reduction half reaction minus the oxidation. Now, they write it like this, but what they're referring to is the reduction potential of the oxidation. So that's what they're saying is before you reverse it. So for example, they would still look at this as negative 0.76. So they wouldn't, because they would refer to it as a reduction potential. Um, the better way to do this is basically just take your cell voltage as the sum of the two. And so when I write it this way, and this is what the textbook should be doing, when I write it like this, um, I'm referring to it after it's been flipped around. Okay, so that's that. So that's after uh, it's been reversed. Okay. Okay, so let's 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 look at what we're talking about here. So let's look at um, the um, balance half re, uh, the balance equation and the overall voltage uh, between aluminum metal and silver ion. So when you see that, what that means is. Those are the two that you should see on the reactant side. Okay, so here's, so again, your table, everything is written as a reduction, right? So there's the, so I'll just look at this on the table. So there's the aluminum and there's the silver ions. Okay, so I don't want it like this. So what's gonna happen is I'm going to um, flip around the aluminum. Okay, so this one's gonna, gonna be flipped around. And so as a result, this, this voltage here it's going to turn into a positive. Now, these half reactions, when you do find them on the table, they're already balanced. The half reaction is already balanced. And then when you want to put them together, just do what we did with the half reaction method. Um, you see how there's three electrons here and there's only one here. So we're going to multiply this one by three. Okay. And so flip that one around. So here's the aluminum metal over here. And then the Al3 plus is on this side. And then this one's been multiplied by three. So there's three silver ions and three uh, metallic silvers. And then uh, notice that when you multiply this by three, you, you leave the voltage as is. Okay, so you don't multiply that by three. You just keep it the way it is. And so now this is going to be equal to your reduction half potential plus your oxidation half potential. Okay, and so this is the oxidation half potential. Uh, it's got a positive because it's been flipped. And so this is your overall cell voltage, 2.46 volts. Okay, so that's what you would have on the moment you kind of set this up. 
No, another way to look at things, uh, we've, I've asked you the same type of question before, um, but now we can answer this in terms of the voltage. So when we say something is going to react spontaneously, what you're saying is you want the E cell uh, to be positive. Okay, so if the, if the cell voltage is positive, it's going to be spontaneous. If it's negative, it's not going to occur. So again, if we want to show this reaction, what you want to do is, is show the silver metal and the hydrogen ions both on the reactant side. Okay, so you have to flip one around. So here's the uh, silver metal, okay? And then here's the hydrogen ions. And then when you put the two voltages together, you get uh, negative um, 0 0.80. So the answer here is going to be no. Okay, so this would not react spontaneous because you have a negative uh, cell voltage. Okay, let's look at one with the diagram. So here's a question. Um, you've got the battery illustration in front of you um, and you want to label the parts and, and talk about which one is the anode and, and cathode and which one's positive and negative. Um, so first off, here's your, two, um, here's your two reduction potentials. Okay, so again, just as you would copy it from the, um, from the, uh, uh, the table. And what you notice is the zinc is, is lower right and lower means it's going to be more um, it's going to be more negative so this is going to be the one that we want to flip around as the oxidation and so if this one uh, has to be flipped around uh, in order to write it as oxidation then what this one uh, tells you is this is going to be the anode okay oxidation is anode so here this is your anode and this is your negative terminal okay so anode is always a negative terminal and then this is your cathode and this is your positive terminal. Okay, so just look at any battery. It's got a positive and a negative terminal. And, and then uh, electron flow is always going from uh, anode to cathode. Okay, so your electron flow is, is gonna be going this way. Okay. okay, so after you sort that out, now we can uh, we, we can write in the, redu the reaction. So here's your uh, reduction. Okay, so that's the one just gonna stay the way it is. Direction of electron flow again is anode to cathode, so that's going to be the zinc node to the lead node. Um, direction of the ions, okay, so the zinc 2 plus uh, is going to go to the salt bridge and the PB2 plus is going to go to the cathode. Okay, so again, your anode mass is decreases, your cathode mass increases, and then the E cell is going to be the sum um, of the two half cell reactions, so this is the reduction. And then this is the oxidation after you, you flip the sign. And so that gives you an overall um, voltage of 0.63. Okay, so I'll stop there. Uh, so you can work on these questions uh, out of the textbook. Let me know if you're having any trouble uh, with those. Um, and then, like I said, I'll give you the final topic um, on Friday. Uh, and then uh, on Friday as well, I'll give you the uh, take home unit exam just on uh, electrochemistry in terms of what we covered and that'll be the final uh, thing for the um, the course okay and so you'll have next week uh, to hand that in so um, again ask me questions on, uh, on any of, of these ones that don't make sense but also ask me anything that we've done previously uh, that you'd like me to uh, go over okay so stuff we've done uh, previously in the unit okay so I'll stop there uh, so we're, we're almost at the end here um, so again, uh, stay safe, look after yourself, uh, and let me know if you have any questions. Okay. I'll talk to you again on Friday. Okay. Bye now.